everybody, James with Love My Pup. Today we're going to talk about equipment that I think you should have, um, and we specifically microscopes and why and what you can do with them. So, you know, you think of these things as being, um, you know, lab people in a back room, someone with a white coat, and you know, maybe your vet's got obviously got one, but it's not something that you you should have. Well, you should have one because there is a plethora of things that you can find out about dogs with one of these guys. So. What should you get in terms of a microscope? Well, I would get a used microscope because they're a hell of a lot less expensive. This guy here I paid $65 for on eBay. Just got this one the other day. In fact, I got three of them for something 165 bucks. And I've got people around here who want a microscope. I find them a nice one and, and they, they, they buy a microscope that I found for them. But anyway, you can go on eBay. You can buy a brand new microscope on Amazon for a couple of hundred bucks that's a fairly serviceable microscope. I would absolutely get a binocular microscope, one that has two eyepieces, both of your eyes looking at the same time. The field of view is so much better. Um, so highly recommend that you go buy not just a single monocular uh, microscope, but a binocular microscope. And then I'd go for a brand that's, you know, that you see lots of on eBay. Um, you know, if you see used one, then, uh, you know, good ones are, well, this is a Fisher. It's a good, Fisher Scientific's a good name. Um, oh, no, now you got me in a clutch here. I can't think of the names of these silly things. Um, I've got another nice microscope that is, um, oh, golly, I can't, anyway, I'll think of it in a little bit, I'll tell you. But basically, go look on eBay. If you see a number, what you'll see is you'll see lab microscopes that uh, they're a lab somewhere at a university is changing out to a whole bunch of more modern microscopes, probably with digital readers on them and they get rid of the older ones and so these older ones that might be 30 or 40 years old they're still very very serviceable microscopes um, and and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this before we get into specifically why you should have one but basically what you want is a 10x most of these will come with what's called a 10x um, eyepiece let's see if it says it on here somewhere so we can read it it doesn't but you'll get a 10x eyepiece which is the magnification of the eye there it is you can see it right there it's uh See that this is, says 10x. You need know, a 10x eyepiece, and then you're going to have a number of different magnifications that you can swivel between. And the important ones you want is you want to have like a low power. This is like a five, so that gives me five times ten is fifty times. Then I've got a ten, which is this next one's a 10x. Ten times ten gives me a hundred. Then this one's a forty. Forty times again is going to be four hundred. Those are the three that you need. This last one on this uh, gives me um, a thousand power and you have to use oil for that. I just never use it. So I think there's no not necessary to have the really high power stuff because you just have a hard time seeing stuff. Basically, most of the time I'm using these two here. I'm using the, the, the 40 times or the 100 times. Most of the work that I do is with that. All right. So what else do you need? So you need to go buy some, some slides and I buy these on Amazon. They're dirt cheap. So you buy some slides and uh, little glass slides, and I don't know what a box cost, 10 bucks or something, you know, for a few hundred of them, not very expensive. Then you want to get some cover slips, little box of cover slips here, that's a very thinner piece of glass. I'll show you the cover slip. That's actually two stuck together, that's a cover slip. And the cover slip, you put the specimen on the, mic on the slide, on the microscope slide, and you put, then you put the cover slip over the top of it. And that traps everything in place and it, and it really means you can get really close to the sample without getting the muck from the sample on the lens itself. So you want to get those two things. right? And then you also want to go buy some um, uh, stain. Uh, and uh, I, I bought a kit here recently on eBay. It was not very expensive. I think it was $18. And it comes with all different kinds of colored stains. All you do with this stain is, is you just put a drop of it on the slide and it helps you differentiate between the different things you're looking at. Without the stain, everything looks like basically very, very clear looking, slight gray looking colors. The stain really gives you contrast where you can see things much, much better. So especially when you're starting out with definitely, well, whatever. I mean, if you do much of this, you're going to have a stain kit. Go buy a stain kit. So what are you going to have in all of this? You might have a hundred bucks in it. That's it. That's one trip to the vet. One trip to the vet gets you this guy here, Gets you some microscope slides, gets you some cover slips, gets you some stain. 100 bucks. I mean, you might pay 120, but I mean, that's the kind of price you're going to pay for this. And you can do so much with a microscope. So let's talk about why you would use this. So the biggest thing that I use it for is I've got a dog that's getting, has gut problems. He's got diarrhea. And the common things that cause di di diarrhea are 
coccidia, giardia, worms. And you can diagnose all of those things and then treat with the appropriate treatment yourself at home. So um, coccidia looks like, and then you'd look at a, a low power, you know, a hundred times, you'd see 40 of those eggs would cover the whole, whole thing you're looking at. That's how small they are. They're pretty visible. Don't have to have really high power. They look like little round things. And I'm not going to go over the specifics of what you're looking for because we don't have, if we had a digital view on this thing, we could look at things and point things out. But you can find all this information on the internet. So I'm not going to go over how you identify those things. I want to talk more about why you'd have this so that you can identify them. So coccidia, triple you treat that with Albon or uh, uh, Thoratazil. You know, you can treat that with this product here, which is an off-label we used, we talked of before, I, because it's all probably backwards, so you can't read it. Uh, but anyway, that one there, and Albon. Albon is another, again, it's backwards, but it's A-L-B-O-N, Albon. Two treatments for coccidia, very effective. Another one that you can see is Giardia. Again, it looks like small little round egg-looking like things. Uh, for that, you use Metrondazole. You can buy... Um, you can, well, I don't have that in here, but you can buy a product called Fish Zoll, which is for fishes you can get over the counter. It's exactly the same thing. You can treat those things. Um, worms, I use Safeguard and I use Nemex 2 to treat for worms. So you can see round worms, whip worms, tape worms, all of these things you can really identify on a relatively low power. Now, the trick to this is, is what you do is you go get some fresh poop out of your dog uh, you know, right after it's poop, go get your teaspoon, put some up into a little bag so you can go up to the house with it. And then what you want to do is you can do this one of two ways. You can put some poop sample on this with a little bit of uh, water and smush it around, put a cover slide on it and look under a microscope. But a much better way to do that, this is what's called a flotation. And a flotation, if I've got a marker here, for a flow, hope you can see this, yes. So for a flotation, what the idea is, is that the you put the the poop sample into some fluid that has is heavier than water because most of the things like you and I we're made out of saline if you can get something in something that's heavier than that we and all the bugs float to the top that's why when you go to the salt lake um, uh, you know in the, the in the, wherever that is in Jerusalem around that area there you know they've got the, the Red Sea the Red Sea is made of salt you float like crazy in it you do the same thing here so what you do is you can get water you can use sugar so you make up a solution of warm water and sugar, get as much sugar as you can get to dissolve in it. Uh, that's one way to do it. A better way to do it is go get Epsom salts. It makes for an even heavier um, liquid. Epsom salts is better. But basically what you do is you go get, so you can use a shot, shot glass, uh, you can use a test tube, and basically you go ahead and uh, put some, get some poop out of the dog and put some poop into this. Then put in your heavy liquid, your salty water, your sugary water, or better yet, your Epsom water. You stir it around, so you break this poop up and you make a nasty poopy slurry in there. It's pretty, pretty watery. Then what you do is you fill it back up with water, and if I've got a different color marker here, it'd make it a little bit more visible, and I probably don't. So we'll just live with this. So then what you do is, is you fill this thing up with water, so the water makes a little bit of a bubble on the top of it. So the water, you know, it's got a meniscus, it's slightly proud. So this is now all fluid in here with a poopy mixture. And you then take a cover slide or a slide and you put it over the top of this. You rest it on the top of this. And what happens is the eggs float up to the surface and they stick on the bottom side of this uh, slide. And you can see them so much easier. So that's called a flotation technique. It's good for anything you want to look at that that's, uh, is hard to, to, to see under a microscope. Anything that comes out of a dog's butt, that's the way to do it. That's much, much more effective. You let it sit for about an hour. And after an hour, the, the eggs will float to the surface and they'll be on this cover slide. You then take that cover slide, turn it around, uh, put, it on, put it on a microscope bed, and you can look at it. And you can see exactly what's going on. So you can use that for tapeworms, hookworms, roundworms. Uh, coccidia, giardia, uh, all of those things, uh, strongholds, all of those things you can do by doing that. Works great. All right, so what's the next reason you might want a microscope? Um, for me, uh, I uh, pull for my dogs to collect uh, semen to send off to my customers. Uh, I want to evaluate uh, how this, this sample looks and what I'm looking for under that. Again, it's a relatively low power. I'm looking for the quantity of sperm that are present how their shape is, 
And again, you can go on the internet and find out, but do they look nice like this, with nice heads on them? Or do they have some of them where the heads are broken off? Do they have some of them where the tails are all crooked? Are they swimming nicely? Um, those are all things that you can do to evaluate the sperm. And you can buy a special slide, and that umbrella, I'm going to blow this up. Here's the slide, the side view, and it has a depression in it. And what you do is you take your sample, uh, and you put in a drop of the sample in that slide opening right there, and then you put a cover slide over it, and the cover, the cover slip goes over it like this, and then you have a known volume in there, and you physically count the number of sperm that you can see under a certain magnification, and from that you can work out exactly how much sperm you have in your sample. If you get good enough at it, I do enough of this, I can just look at it and I can tell you whether it looks fine. But anyway, if you're going to do much collection, you should have that. Uh, another one would be um, scabies, mange, uh, sores on the skin. All of these things could be a parasite. And so what you do on this is, is you do a skin scraping. So um, we're going to pretend that I'm the dog and I have a, some kind of a sore that's going on here. So I want to do the skin scraping where the sore is. What I'll do first is shave to get rid of any of the hair that's in the way. So I've just exposed the skin like you can see on me. Then I'm going to take a sharp knife. You could use a razor blade or a scalper, but you've got to be pretty darn careful. I much, I much prefer to use something that I really can't cut very deep with unless I get really stupid with it. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically scrape. So what you do is you take a drop of mineral oil or olive oil to lubricate things, and you really start to scrape the skin hard. And what you're doing is the little parasites are bur burrowed into the skin, and you've got to get them out of the skin and onto the surface and into that oil. So you've got to get pretty rough with it to the point that you'll see blood blistering, you know, these little hemorrhages of blood where you've scraped the skin. I mean, it, you're going to make the dog sore. But do that, and then the kind of gunge that you've picked up on the knife, you just put that straight onto a microscope slide, just wipe it onto a microscope slide, look it under the scope, and then look for the telltale signs of uh, scabies, rib mange. Again, what does it look like? It's a, quite easy to see, um, kind of a six-legged, maybe an eight-legged hoot sets that you're going to look at. You can look at it on the Google and you can see exactly what they look like. But that's another one that you can, and you can treat that yourself too. But the, but the, but the secret to all of this is, is to, if you've got a microscope and you start doing this, you can catch things early. And catching things early stops things before they get out of control and before other of your dogs might have had infected by whatever's going on. Uh, and, and furthermore, you don't have to go to the vet and you don't have to go spend the money. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole process is, it just makes absolute sense. Now, remember, I'm not a vet. So all these things you take upon your own, uh, you know, if you want to do this, don't, don't come back and complain at me if your dog dies of something that you didn't diagnose correctly. I mean, you know, be sensible about this. Absolutely, your vet has a place uh, in your life. You know, you, you should have a good vet on hand so that when you've got a problem and you're not sure whether you've got it right or you need a second opinion or you just don't know what's going on, you absolutely should go to your vet. So don't make this a complete replacement for your vet. But what I'm saying is it's one more tool in your arsenal that if you don't have a microscope, go get one. They're fun things to have. You can use them for so many. I mean, you've got a splinter on your finger, whatever else. You can use it for all kinds of interesting things. Just to, if you've got kids around the house to go look at bugs and insects, fascinating, just absolutely fascinating. You can tell I'm a geek, right? I love this stuff. Um, but again, less than a hundred bucks, get yourself a decent binocular microscope, spend another $20 worth of supplies, and you are in business. So again, thanks for watching my channel. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you think I'm an idiot, let me know why so we can change what we're doing. And uh, be nice to your doggies. Bye, everybody.